So why is there so much focus on the non-plant based, the ones that kind of fall to the, to the bottom of the list? You know, weight loss is hard and that's what most people are really struggling with. Um, but it's not just weight loss, diabetes management, cholesterol management, all of that. These things aren't easy. Right. And when somebody says, oh, but this way is the easy way. Well, we want that. <laughs> but you know what really is the easiest way? To stop looking for an edge and just accept it's hard and find your path. You just have to stop looking for the easy. If, it, if there was an easy way, nobody would have heart disease. Nobody would have extra weight. Nobody would have out of control blood sugar if there were an easy way. And there just isn't. So I, I think that that's what it is. People are looking for the edge. And the edge is to stop looking for the edge. I, I talk so much about that. It's, it's, you know, it's nutrition you can live with. It's, you know, the diet you don't know you're on. Can you see yourself living this way years down the road? And um, I think that, yeah, I mean, people are looking for, well, maybe this is the answer that they didn't know about before. I call it the diet of the month club. Yeah. You know, people are always looking for the next one. Mm -hmm. um, oh, but they, I heard this was the good one. I heard this was the good one. I heard this is the good one. It's yeah. like, yeah, it's just, it's very frustrating because it's just not easy. I, I know. You just think about all the temptations that we have and that the, also that we think we're supposed to rely on willpower and, and discipline. It's like, I mean, just the definition of willpower is denying yourself of something you want. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to constantly live with willpower, constantly deny ourselves of something we want. Yeah. No, we have to find another path. We have to find a way, march through a path where things become rote, where we just know that dinner includes vegetables every night. You don't have to stop and think about it. It's not, do I have to have vegetables for dinner tonight? It's which vegetables are for tonight. And it's like, you don't think about, am I going to exercise today? You just do it. I know I'm going to exercise today. When things become very, very routine, then it's the diet you don't know you're on. Right. And it's, it's the habit formation too. That's, and that's what... absolutely the habit formation. You know the first book that I wrote, the one that you held up, Diabetes, yeah. Weight Loss Week by Week? So that covers a whole year. And that was very important to me. So it's week by week for the first few months, and then it's monthly after that. But it was so important to me that it cover a whole year because people need that amount of time right. to experience all the tough things that they're going to go through. So typically, you have a birthday. Maybe you have an anniversary. You have a child's birthday. Maybe you have a birth of a kid. Maybe, you know, you get a new job. You have a vacation. You need to go through all those things and, and work through all of them and do it over and over and over. And you, then you know that dinner has vegetables every night. Then you know that breakfast has a good source of protein every morning and that a snack is a piece of fruit. But you have to do it long enough. And so I wanted that book to be a whole year so people had guidance to keep them on, you know, structure. Right. Uh, because otherwise you don't have those habits. Yeah. And stop trying to deny yourself of everything because willpower doesn't work. Willpower is so overrated. We have a teeny tiny bit of willpower and that's used up like 10 o'clock in the morning. That's right. <laughs> that's right. 10 o'clock. And sure. usually it's, it's these, have, you know, it's usually in the evening that people run into problems. Well, and it's like the power is, is tapped out. It yeah. is strongest in the morning. Yeah. You know, it's that restriction. It's like, I think it's easy for somebody because like, oh, I don't, I just don't have to eat this and it will make it easier for me. Well, they don't have to decide. They don't have to make a decision. And right. that's what makes it easier. That's why, right. that's another reason you ask me why people gravitate to those other diets is because the rules are very strict and there is comfort in strict or also is torture in it yeah <laughs> you know yeah you can, it's it's comfortable it's comforting at first whether that be days or weeks mm -hmm. but months into it people are tired of it <laughs> oh yeah well you remember it's kind of like hmr is one of the, the top four quick weight loss you know fast mm -hmm. weight loss and it's it's like you don't have to think about it because it's drinking your meal right. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think that, that holds a lot of appeal to people. It does. That's all I have to do. But 
are you learning? Right. The habits. Are you for, forming the good habits is right. really what it comes down to. Yeah. Is, um, we really want to think about how we can put our systems in place, not just a, a goal like I'm going to eat vegetables or I'm going to eat fruit or something like that, or I'll, I'll have a piece of fruit for snack every day. I mean, that's a great goal and it's a great behavior, but what's the system that gets you there? Mm -hmm. Is it taking it out of the refrigerator and putting it in a lunch bag every morning? Is it making sure that whomever is doing the grocery shopping gets a good variety of fruits? Mm -hmm. Is it making sure you go to the grocery store more often? Or is it finding canned varieties that you like? Something like that. But what's the whole system, not just what's the immediate behavior that you're going for? And you bring up something just in a, in a recent call of mine with a client. It was, um, she'd worked with me before and she's coming back kind of do a like, like we got a little do it quick start after, over the, after the holidays. And it was simply putting those foods in the fridge in clear containers oh, yeah. that, that you can see easily. And again, it's just getting into that. You know, sometimes some of these very simple things that we think about, I mean, it can really have fruitful results. And oh my gosh, of course. The treats like in a little bit harder to reach place that aren't like right there staring, you know, on the counter. Because it's that environment. Small is... changes, big differences. Pardon me? Small changes lead to big differences. Right. So yeah. if you just think about this, this is an example that I was thinking about the other day. So for eight years, I worked on the third floor of a building. Mm -hmm. And for eight years, I didn't take the elevator unless I was carrying something exceptionally heavy. Yeah. And that probably was a couple dozen times over the total three years. I always took the stairs. And while I worked in that office, there was also a restroom like two doors down from me and then one down the hall. So I always took the one that was down the hall. And so over the course of eight years, that's a lot of steps. Mm -hmm. So I think that that contributes, can't be the sole reason, but I think that contributed to my being able to maintain my weight for eight years. So you can't say, okay, well, I took the stairs today. Yay, I'm done. Right, no. But when it is your habit, it is not part of your system to take the stairs and you do it day after day after day, year after year after year, it makes a difference. It does. And what I know when I started in private practice and I went from, you know, getting up and, and getting my car, driving to work, you know, walking into the office and walking around the office building. And, and then I started working from home. It's like, oh, my, you know, pants get a little bit snug. So you have to, and it's like with the pandemic, I think a lot of people kind of found themselves into, yeah. you know, there's these kind of situations. And like you said, it's just, it's not what you did just one day. It's what your habits are. It's like, no, you know, right. you're gonna, you know, starting and then just continuing and, and starting small too. It's just those babies. Right. So that's why I think all of these top eating patterns are really good because it's not a bunch of rules, right. it's a bunch of healthy foods. So you just have to start, just start. Whether that's, I'm going to make every snack, every afternoon snack a piece of fruit, or I'm going to make sure that I have a big source of protein with my breakfast every day, or whatever it is, or I'm just gonna have fish at least once. You know, I mean, we'd like to have people have fish at least twice a week, but if they're not big fish eaters, they can start with once. They can start with once a month. Just start. Right. And that's why I think that that, that um, one of the one of the many reasons I ranked them highly, and clearly my colleagues on the expert panel did as well, and why the other ones are rated poorly, it's because it's a bunch of rules. Yeah. And it's not about health, typically. It's typically about weight loss, but you know, you can lose weight loss by getting the flu. Um, so weight loss doesn't equal good, you know? right. um, but typically they're, they're about weight loss, not about health or nutrition. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when they're kind of convoluted, take a little tiny piece of actual science and stretch it into something that makes no sense anymore. It just sounds like it does. Right. So they'll be talking about, you know, autoimmune disease or heart disease or something, digestive problems. Um, again, some of those are just filled with just so many rules that are based on the tiniest dot of truth. 
right? It just gets magnified <laughs> into something that no longer makes sense. Any diet is going to work for you because you stick to it. Yeah, plus, if you're changing, you know, if you're going from a really poor, unhealthy manner of eating and then eating, just changing your habits and that awareness yes. that people have. Yes, absolutely true. Um, so, yeah. And, you know, I think no matter how poorly it might have ranked, if, if they're focusing, though, I think on the, on the, you know, wholesome foods and not, you know, because we can get all sorts of gluten free foods that are, you know, definitely not the healthiest, but you can also do that in a very healthy manner, too. Thanks to diabetes educator and registered dietitian nutritionist Jill Weisenberger, one of the 24 experts on the U.S. News and World Report Best Diets panel. Make sure you watch our other videos and of course, uh, please give me a thumbs up and comment. It really helps my videos to get seen. Thanks for watching Neely on Nutrition and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.